Welcome to Peace with Lutheran Church this fine morning. We're glad you're here, even if it's raining outside. It's nice in here, especially now that you're here. Welcome to Peace for Worship. And especially if you are a visitor, welcome today. There's a guest book on the left. I'm on a podium. Please sign that. We'd like to know who you are this morning. A few announcements from your bulletin we'd like to highlight. Um, they're all important, but we'd like to know uh, particularly about a few of them. They're all opportunities. We're not forcing you guys to do anything. Um, but we invite you to pray about it, think about it, and if God calls you to be a part of these things, go to it, all right? We are Coats for Kids Drop-Off Center. It's a little box on the other side of the gathering area. It's already been filled up once with your gently used or new coats. Fill it up again, everybody. If you feel God calling you to do it, bring them in. We'll get that to those people who are in need, all right? The uh, Full Circle Group is doing a meal at the NEW Shelter coming up on November 4th. And if you would like to donate ingredients, the details are in your bulletin about that. Um, that will help the um, homeless people there um, have a good meal. Check that out. We'll be sending out care packages to our college students and also our military personnel coming up um, right around Thanksgiving. We're going to give thanks for them with those. If you'd like to be a part of that, you can bring them in. Um, gum, hard candies. If you bring chocolate... I eat it, so whatever you want to do, you can bring that in. Um, but bring those in, um, and we'll send those out to those people. Um, and, and if you have a college student or someone in the military, give us their addresses, um, and we'll send that to them then too. All right? Sunday school students received um, hunger banks last week. If you received those, that's awesome. Take those home. Fill that up with all of your loose change. Um, anything you'd like to give to people who are in need, we'll have them bring those back around Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Eve, we have a service. They can bring those in that night or anytime after. All right? And if you feel slighted by that because you're not a kid in Sunday school, you can take one too. Don't worry. They're on a the table in the gathering area right by the bear. Take those and fill it up as well. All right? Operation Christmas Child boxes are on the table. If you'd like to be a part of that, um, the dates are for when those are, are needed to be back by. They're all a part of that little bundle. Check that out and you can help make Christmas um, a little better celebration for someone in the United States and abroad. Always a good gift. All right? Um, and if you've gone into the donut room, you guys have probably been there. It's a great festive place with donuts, right? Coffee and some good stuff. And the harvest table, check that out. And the men of peace, they made 630-some pizzas yesterday. So if you had them made, check them out. You probably can pick them up this morning. And I think they made about 100 extras. So if you're looking for pizzas, find some in the donut room. They'll make you pay for them. But, you know, you can still get them for lunch. All right? Check that out today. All right? Um, what else do we have? Um, don't forget to check in. Peace Lutheran Church on your Facebook app or Instagram. Please do that. Don't forget that helps everyone in your group, uh, friend group know that you're here um, worshiping Jesus. And it also does great things this month for ovarian and breast cancer awareness. All right? A great thing to do. Don't forget to do that before you leave today. All right? Now, those are all opportunities. Pray about it. See if God is calling you to be a part of those things. But I'm not going to allow you to have a choice in this one. Stand up and be nice, everyone. Say good morning. song will be on the screen. Here I am to worship. You won't be find it anywhere else, but I think you'll know it. Oh, 
together wonderful to be. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that. together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. We gather ourselves together this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship this, time, uh, this morning with a time of confession and forgiveness, and we will use Psalm 51. David, King David wrote this psalm as a, a prayer of cleansing and pardon, but we'll take a moment in, in silence before we begin. And we continue. You guys begin. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins. Wash away all my evil and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you, and done what you consider evil. So you are right in judging me. You are justified in condemning me. I have been evil from the day I was born. From the time I was conceived, I have been sinful. Sincerity and truth are what you require. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Remove my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. And though you have crushed me and broken me, I will be happy once again. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe out all my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach sinners your commands, and they will turn back to you. Spare my life, O God, and save me, and I will gladly proclaim your righteousness. Hear these words of forgiveness. Because of Jesus and what he has given to you on the cross, because of his blood that was shed for you, because of the grace, love, and mercy of God, all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. all Our hymn of praise is thy word. We just sing the refrain twice. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and 
shed a light unto my path. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, you are gracious. And you do not look on our outward appearance, but you look at our hearts. And you look on all of us, all of us, all that we are in love and in your grace. We thank you for this gift. Help us to draw us closer to who you are, a God of grace and mercy, always and forever for us. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's people said. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with the Bible reading. Our lesson today, the first one comes from the 16th chapter of the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. They came. Samuel looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and Samuel said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Jesse sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. And from the 51st Psalm, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new And right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And sustain me. In me. A willing spirit. Here ends the readings. Good morning. 920 boys and girls. How are you on this rainy day? You doing okay? Have you been enjoying the beautiful fall colors? Isn't it nice to look on something and feel like that's just beautiful? Have you ever used one of these? Ever used a mirror? You look at that and say, oh, that's just beautiful too? Right? You know, it's not nothing wrong with looking in the mirror. You want to look the nicest you can look. Do the best you can with what God gave you. But you know what's really sad? Sometimes people look in the mirror and they don't like what they see. There's sometimes people look in the mirror and they don't like themselves. They say, I don't look nice enough. Nobody's ever going to like me. I just don't look the way you're supposed to look. Isn't that sad? You know what else is sad? When people look at other people and say, I don't like the way they look either. I can't accept them. 
because they don't look right. Isn't that sad? You know, a lot of times people say it's how you look that's important, but not to God. Right? You, you remember last week Pastor Stewart talked about Samuel? He was a young man. And God said, Samuel! And Samuel said, here I am, Lord, send me. And God put Samuel to work. And he did that today. In our lesson today, God said to Samuel, you're going to go to a town called Bethlehem. And you're going to find there a man named Jesse. He's got lots of boys, lots of sons. And you're going to make one of them the next king. So Samuel, here I am, send me. Went to Bethlehem, found Jesse. And Jesse took his sons. And he said, here they are. Which one do you want? And he went to the oldest and said, yeah, he looks good. And God said, no, he's not. And he went to the second son. And Samuel said, how about this one? No, not that one. Went to the third son. How about this one? No, I don't want that one. Fourth one, negative. Goes through seven sons. None of them are acceptable. And then finally, Samuel says, is that it? You got any more? And Jesse said, well, out in the fields taking care of the sheep, there's the baby of the family. Little Davy's out there. So we'll bring him in. And so they called David in. And God said, this is the one. And Samuel anointed him. And David became the next king of Israel. And people said, that's crazy. He's just a kid. He didn't look like a king. You should look like a king if you're going to be a king. And, and Samuel said this. This is what God says. You know, people look on the outside. They look at how somebody looks. But God looks at the heart. God wants to know what's in somebody's heart. What does God want to see in the heart? You think he wants to find peace in the heart? You know how you can have peace? You can know that even though you've messed up, God forgives you. You can let it go. Find peace. You ever get worried and afraid? That's not good in your heart, is it? You know what can help you help you when you're worried and afraid? Hope. You know where hope comes from? When God says you're going to be okay. No matter what happens, even when you die, you're going to be okay. And the best part is joy. Joy is when you know you're loved. You can't do anything to earn it, but you get it. You're loved. And you know what God wants? He wants us to have a clean heart, a good heart. And he gave us Jesus. And Jesus died so we can be forgiven and have peace. And Jesus came back from the dead to say that we'll always be in God's care and we can have hope. And Jesus is the Son of God and He came to be with us and we know we are loved. Does that feel good in your heart? You know, boys and girls, you're going to look in the mirror a lot of times in your life. And that's okay. You know, do the best you can with what God gave you. You know, look as nice as you can. But if you ever look in the mirror and you don't feel good about yourself, if you ever look in the mirror and feel like, I'm not good enough, I can't feel good about myself, what you want to do is put down the mirror and look in your heart. And see if you can find some peace. And see if you can find some hope. And see if you can find joy. And you know how you do that? Remember Jesus. Remember how He gives us the heart we need. And we can help other people to have the heart they need, too. You know, once in a while there are people who do this trick where they look in the mirror and they walk backwards. Okay? I don't want you to do that. I want you to walk forward when you go back to your seats, boys and girls. And I don't want to tell the kids the scariest part when you get older, you look in the mirror and say, Who is that? <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. They look on the outward appearance. Does that sum up our society? Do we put a lot of pressure on people to look right Right? To be acceptable by our appearance. It's kind of hard, isn't it? You ever have a hard time looking in the mirror? And saying, I just don't look perfect. I guess I could be better. Am I acceptable? Can I feel good about myself? And, and then, then we do that with other people too. We kind of judge them by the way we look. And it's almost impossible not to. We live in that kind of world. You got People Magazine every year. The most beautiful woman in the world. 
And that's how you're supposed to look if you're beautiful, right? There's another website that did a poll to find out who the most handsome man in the world is. And they came up with Robert Pattinson. Right? Guys, if you want to look great, that's what you want to look like. And what really makes me feel bad, I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> And if it wasn't bad enough trying to compare yourself to other people, there was one website that decided to do a composite of what a woman should really look like. And they put Amber Heard's nose and chin on her, and Kim Kardashian's eyebrows and forehead, and Scarlett Johansson's eyes, and Rihanna's face shape, and Emily Ratajkowski's lips. All right? Ladies, that's what you're supposed to look like, okay? Somebody who doesn't even exist. That's how you're supposed to look if you're going to be beautiful. To put some pressure on you? Talk about pressure. When I was doing this important research, okay, came across Women's World website, and here's a poll they did. The 10 most handsome people. And you will be surprised to know that neither Pastor Stewart nor I were on the list. I mean, how do you feel when you see that stuff? How do you feel when it said, this is what you're supposed to look like. You can't be beautiful until you look like this. You can't be handsome until you look like that. It's kind of a horrible feeling, isn't it? You want to feel better? This might make you feel better. But the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. We're continuing the story of Samuel today. Samuel volunteered to do whatever the Lord told him to go do. And... The Lord said, I heard my people. They want a king. I don't want them to have a king, but they keep saying, priests aren't good enough. Prophets aren't good enough. Our, our judges are not good enough. Everybody else has a king. We want a king. So God said to Samuel, go and find Saul. Saul will be the next king. And he seemed like the perfect choice. He came from a good, wealthy family. Right? He was, it says, handsome. People want a handsome king. And he was tall. It says he was a head taller than everybody else in the kingdom. Right? And we like tall people. 67% of the time, people have elected the taller candidate for president. All right? So, Saul's perfect candidate, except he had anger management issues. <laughs> and on top of that, he did not work well with other people. Or even with God. And God finally said, no, this is not going to work. We're going to need to get another king. So he says to Samuel, go to Bethlehem. There's a guy named Jesse who's got lots of sons. I'll tell you which one is going to be the next king. And Samuel was not thrilled about this. Number one, he kind of liked Saul. And number two, he knew that Saul had anger management issues. And if, he found, if Saul found out Samuel had anointed a new king... It's over for Samuel. But Samuel, here I am, Lord, send me. And he went to Bethlehem. And he found Jesse. And Jesse lined up his sons. All right? Starts out with Eliab. And Samuel said, this has got to be the one. This guy looks impressive. He seems like the perfect king candidate. And God said, he is not. And then he took the second son, Abinadab, and says, is this the one? Samuel said, no, that's not it. Went to Shama and says, is Shama the one? And Samuel said, God says, not him. And they go through seven sons and none of them are adequate. I was kind of in, are in, I'm interested in how people name their kids. When people have a lot of kids, you can tell the first couple they really spend a lot of time picking a name. And when they get more and more kids, they just don't really care anymore. And they said, well, there's Dave. <laughs> Dave's out in the field with the sheep. And Samuel said, bring him in. And so they bring in David. And Samuel says, God says, this is the one. This is the one who will be the next king. Everybody thinks, that doesn't make any sense. But here's what Samuel is told. Mortals look on the, the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Now here's what's kind of strange about that. It says, Now David was ruddy, and had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. He looks on the he doesn't look at the appearance. This guy's a 
great guy. You describe this guy and you think, maybe you should make a statue of him, okay? I mean, he's handsome, but the question then is, what was in his heart? You know, David was a very impetuous guy. He didn't think things through very well, it seemed. He just did them. Like when he was a teenager, this giant shows up. He said, i got a slingshot. I can take him on. Not smart. But it worked out for him. He was one of the generals in the army of Israel. And he was daring. He did things militarily that didn't make any sense. And guess what? It all seemed to work out for him. And then when he became king, he decided to move the capital to Jerusalem. And he had them bring in the Ark of the Covenant where the Ten Commandments are kept. And he led the parade, dancing half naked in front of the whole community. And people are thinking, what is he doing? But it worked out for him. And then there were his wives. He had eight wives. And the last one was the one that really caused the problem. You see, he got her pregnant before they were married. And she was already married to somebody else. And to cover up what he had done, he had the woman Bathsheba's husband killed. And he thought he got away with it. Nobody's going to know. I'm okay. And then this prophet named Nathan comes to David and said, You know what? God knows what you did. And pretty soon everybody's going to know what you did. And how did David react? One of the things that you took, you find in David, that in his heart he never wanted to be outside of a relationship with God. No matter where it was, whether it was good times or bad, he always wanted to be connected with God. And when David found out God knew what he had done, He went to God. He went to God to try to find peace. He went to God to try to find hope and maybe find joy again. We have this psalm. We used it for confession this morning. Psalm 51. Some of the verses you've heard before because we sing them over and over again. But let's look at them real quick. Create in me a clean heart of God. I got garbage inside. I want it out. All right, give me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. In Hebrew, this actually means breathe new life into me, give me a new start. Cast me now away from your presence. You know what the worst punishment in the Bible is? To be separated from God. And David prays, please, God, don't separate yourself from me. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. In order to have life, I need your Spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. We're going to come back to that one. And uphold me. Give me strength with your free Spirit. The joy of your salvation. Do you think David knew the joy of God's salvation? Here's what happened. He asked God to forgive him. And God did. God forgave David and said, okay... I'm not going to talk about it anymore. And David was given the promise by God, I'll be with you. Wherever you go, I'll be with you. And he had hope. David had the peace of knowing he was forgiven. The hope of knowing that God would be with him. And he found the joy of God saying, I love you, David. I'll always love you, David. That is salvation. And God wasn't satisfied just for David to know salvation. He wanted everybody to know salvation. So about a thousand years after David, in a little town called Bethlehem, with a house and lineage of David, a child was born. And he was God's son. And through him, we know that we're forgiven because he died for us. And we know we can have hope because he promises, because I came back from the dead, you will too, and nothing can ever keep you from my care. And Jesus was God's sign that there is no doubt that you are loved. You will always be loved. And that is salvation. 
guy named Charles Revson founded a cosmetic company called Revlon. You ever heard of it? Okay. And, and he once said this, in our factory we make lipstick, in our advertising we sell hope. That's kind of sad, isn't it? To think you can buy some lipstick and find hope. And even if it makes a difference, it's not going to last. Where do we find real hope? Jesus is risen. He's alive. And because he lives, we live too. God wants us to have salvation. He gave us his son so we can have hope. And we can have joy. And we can have peace. And we can have a clean and full heart. It's okay to look in the mirror. Okay? It's okay to do the best you can with what you've got. But if you ever look in the mirror and don't feel good, look at your heart. Find out what you need in your heart. Okay? And God will give you what you need to have the heart He wants you to have. Because He gave us Jesus. They called Him the Son of David. Some people called Him the Son of Mary. He was the Son of God. And He's the one who gives us the salvation that brings hope and peace and joy to our heart today and every day. Amen. The peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Next hymn is, Be Thou My Vision. Lots of different pastors around the country. Did you guys know that? There are lots of churches. Um, I have a friend in uh, Woodland, Texas, David Hansen, who wrote this creed. It's shorter, concise. Let's take a moment before we confess our faith, before we confess together. And we confess these words together. We believe in God, our Creator, 
who formed us in our innermost being and who knows us better than we know ourselves. We believe in God the Son, who was willing to give his own life because of his deep love for us. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who has gathered us as the Church, gives us the gift of faith, and sends us out into the world with the mission of the Gospel. This we believe. You may be seated. We'll receive your offering, and the kids' choir is going to be singing. Good job, guys. Thanks for singing. Um, please stand as we sing our offering song. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. For our prayers this morning, we have a few people who are in special need. We'd like to raise them up before you and hopefully in some way you can be God's presence to them in need. We pray for Jim Hansen. He was hospitalized this week. We pray for Ellie Johnson and Mary Lee Winnie. They continue their therapy at Woodside. We pray for Jennifer Willaquette. She's having surgery this coming week. We also pray for Claire McNeil. She was had surgery but is recovering at home. And for Joyce McCollum, we'll be having tests this week. We also want to give blessings upon Peyton Anderson, the newborn daughter of Ashley and J.J. Anderson, Asher Dalkey, the newborn son of Mike, Michael and Tara Dalkey, and Aiden Seleski, the newborn son of Mary and Matt Seleski. I will end each petition by praying, Lord, in your mercy, and your responses, hear our prayer. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all of God's creation. 
Trusting in you, O God, we pray for your church across all borders and in all nations. We pray that you would fill all of your people with your Holy Spirit. Grant us generous hearts to share your love that is made known to us in your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for all nations. We pray for leaders of governments and all those who are in positions of authority. God, we pray you would help those with power to use it for the good of all people, especially those who are powerless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we thank you for new life. We pray especially this day your blessing upon Peyton, Asher, and Aiden, so that they and all your children may grow in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for those who are poor or outcast, for those who cannot afford food, medicine, clothing, or shelter. And we pray for those organizations and agencies who serve those who are needy and work on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for this gathering of your people. For those who are unemployed or overworked. For all who are burdened by debt. For those who are sick and those in any need. Today, especially we pray for Jim, for Ellie, for Mary Lee, for Jennifer, for Claire, and for Joyce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a moment of silence now to offer the prayers from our hearts to God who promises to hear us. God, you have given us your presence by your Holy Spirit. You know all the things we have cried out to you in our hearts. You know what we need, God, but we pray that you would answer our prayers. Answer them according to your own will, your own way, and your own time. And as we wait, we pray for your strength, your understanding, and your patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. We pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said. Amen. Their sending song is, Go, my children, with my blessing.